Hi, this is the Armport update talk from Steve McIntyre. Hey, folks. So, Armports, we have two. We may get more. <laughs> um, I may have put the arm logo on this. This is not an official arm talk, really. And I've got to say that just in case people back home start shouting at me for saying the wrong things. So, quick agenda. Let's talk about the existing ARM ports, the build these and the hardware that we have. Oh, what? Oh, God. That's what I'm just doing. Right. Oh, we'll have to live with that for now. Bloody open office. So, I'm going to talk about the existing ARM ports, the buildings and the hardware, what other people are doing, what's coming next. Um, please, people, take notes in Gobby. Again, I will reiterate, I'm not here just to talk at people. Please join in. If you think I'm talking crap, tell me. If you think I'm missing something, if you've got uh, something to raise, please make sure you do. Obviously, for the benefit of the people on the video, make sure you wait for a mic. Um, Otherwise, let's go. So, the oldest of the existing ARM ports in Debian now is Army L. We released it in Lenny. Um, it's survived since that point. We are targeting the EABI soft float um, for a minimum architecture version of what V4, ARM V4T. Are people aware of what V4T means? Is anybody not? Right, okay. Um, ARM has a whole range of different architectures out there. Basically, as, as we move on, similarly to the, I guess, the more well-known i386, i486, and so on, um, new, in, new instructions are added and old instructions are removed as you go later on up the series. Um, version 4 is now really quite old. And the T on the end means that as well as running the normal 32-bit ARM instruction set, it will also run the smaller size thumb instruction set. Um, so for what we have already in ARM EL, you, may, you can use a mix of ARM and thumb instructions. To be honest, most people just tend to use ARM, as far as I'm aware. But th there's always people who do different. Um, the reason that we're still targeting V4T with Army L is it's still needed for older hardware. Um, anybody here with an open MoCo? <laughs> Woo! Um, I mean, the really old hardware, the old strong arms, are, will, won't r go with this anymore. Um, the open MoCo, I believe, is the only thing out there that people still care about that must have V4. Um, it is an open question as to whether and as to how long we're going to support those for. If anyone wants to, wants to comment on that, now is a good time. Cool, okay, we can go for E5. <laughs> um, it's still supported upstream. Um, the toolchain still works, uh, the kernel still works. Um, most upstream software in as much as it ever cares, will happily work on V4T. We get the odd complaint from people who have to think harder about what they support. Say, the JavaScript folks who are doing um, the Java engines in Chrome and Firefox typically complain all the bloody time, oh my god, why are you, why are you only supporting such an old version? But it's something that's, uh, that's open, and I'd like to talk about that more later. The more, the more recent port Hold of on a moment. Um, oh, on go. that point. Yes, Wookie. Uh, no go. one has yet persuaded me that V4T is, so V5 is any faster. So from Debian's point of view, we don't care unless it's actually hard sure. to support. OK. Uh, my understanding is that but it basically makes no difference. So apart from software that simply doesn't build anymore, I don't think we care. Sure. Um, I know from toolchain people at ARM how, keep on telling me otherwise, but I've yet to see any benchmarks that say one way or the other. Um, you and I should go, should go and um, beat Richard up until he actually gives us some useful numbers, I guess. Sorry, Wookie and I both work at ARM, and the toolchain team are, well, sit 
roughly in between us, it's easy for us to go and beat them up until they help. Um, OMHF is the newest, or the, oh, yeah, the newest of the ARM ports in Debian. Um, we started on this a couple of years ago. Um, all, all of the heavy lifting for the bootstrapping was done by uh, Konstantinos Margaritis, who can't be here today. Um, he devoted a good year of his life to, bootstrap, uh, to bootstrapping ARMHF um, because he thought it was the right thing to do. Um, the difference from ARMEL to ARMHF is that ARMHF targets much, much, much newer hardware. Um, V7 is the latest released version of the, of the um, ARM family, um, and we ex expect to be using V7 using the hard float variant of the ABI and using a specific minimum variant of the VFP, the vector floating point unit that comes with V7. Um, ARM has a colorful history with floating point. <laughs> the, back in the day, the very first ARM port in Debian, just called ARM, used to require hardware floating point. The problem with that was that at that point, approximately no ARM hardware ever had floating point. So at the moment you did any floating point work, the system would have to trap on an illegal instruction and unwind in kernel back to the point before that instruction started, emulate the instruction, fix everything up again, and return to user land. So it worked, but, it's, but instead of a floating point op operation taking two, three, four cycles, it could take thousands. <laughs> so it worked, it was crap, we moved on. The um, EABI, which was where we started with RMEL, the, the difference is it actually assumed that you did not have hardware floating point. So even on hardware that did, you would always use library versions of uh, floating point ops. You could, if you had the right hardware, use hardware floating point. Um, and that started to become more and more common. With V7, definitely, it is expected that everything will always have hardware floating point. So the reason that we've shifted ABI again is, again, for performance reasons initially. The problem with assuming that you don't have hardware floating point is when you want to do floating point instructions, you have to copy all of your floating point arguments into the integer registers, call your floating point function, copy them out again, do the work on them, copy them back again, in the, and then in the calling function, copy them back into the floating point registers where they started in the first place. So that's four copies for every single floating point argument going through which is horrendous. Um, as we now actually expect to have always hardware floating point, we thought, fine, let's use it. Benchmarks on this vary hugely in terms of for, for showing what benefits you get. Um, the best type of contrived benchmark will show that you can get like a factor of two in performance improvement using uh, RMHF. That's places where you're doing lots and lots and lots of floating point calculations, but also way down a recursive, a deep recursive stack. So at that point, you're spending more time just copying arguments in RMEL than actually doing any real work. In terms of real software, in terms of some of the other benchmarks, um, RMHF, frankly, is just the same as RMEL, because for integer ops, it make, it's a no-op. For anything that is floating point heavy, you might see a 5% improvement. You might see 10, depending on exactly how heavy it is. If you're unlucky, you, you don't see anything. But equally, you don't lose anything. So the main reason that we've actually stuck with ARMHF is it is the new agreed standard for ARM Linux distributions. So that means Debian is doing an ARMHF in, with this specification. Ubuntu is doing an ARMHF with this specification. S OpenSUSE is doing ARMHF with this spec. Fedora almost are. I'll tell you more about that soon. <laughs> um, there's been some fun that we had defining a new linker path. Um, the one thing that must be different if you're going to have working multi-arch uh, between multiple different flavors, multiple different CPUs, is the location of the runtime linker, LD.SO. 
Um, if that clashes with two of your architectures, you just lose. You cannot work around this because obviously that is the path that's embedded in the header of all of your ELF objects. The kernel knows that it, it the kernel ELF interpreter looks at that, runs and runs that program to start your to start your program. If there are several different architectures that ha that share the same linker path, the kernel has no idea whether you want to run this as a Spark binary or as a MIPS binary or whatever. Um, that's this is where fun comes in. So we had to define a new linker path for ARMHF, which is different to that for ARMEL. Again, that would cause some controversy in the, the wider community. We now have a solution. I won't, I, if anybody wants to know the details, ask me later. I'm not going to go into all of it now. Um, OMHF is well supported by most people now. Um, it's the default in Ubuntu for ARM. Um, in Debian, we're working on it. Everybody else is. In most cases, of course, the compiler does all the work. You don't need to worry about it. For places where you do need to worry, again, places like Jets, people are already doing the work here, so it's fine. There are bits and pieces that we'd like to finish. Um, Mono at the moment does not do floating point usefully in, to, uh, in, in an ARM context. And yeah, yeah, Mono is capable of doing floating point, but it's awkward. There is still some work to be done if we, to have it. And I know Joe Shields, uh, one of Debian's main mono guys, has been pestering people, me included, for a long time to say, please come and do the work. Um, LibFFI has issues as well. Um, one of the issues with the ARMHF ABI point, actually pointed out a bug in LibFFI. LibFFI, for those people who don't know, is a library that is used for talking between different languages and sharing data structures. Um, if you're going to do different data structures across languages, if you're going to be passing around function definitions and everything, um, it kind of helps if your ABI is supported. OMHF is the first one, I believe, where you, where you, pass, um, you pass floating point reg arguments in registers unless they're in variadic functions, and then they go on the stack. This causes uh, libffi to essentially explode. But, fingers crossed, no, almost no one has actually found a place where anyone does variadics with floating point in libffi. We've looked at Python, we've looked at Haskell. Um, I asked for help for, on this seven, well, many weeks ago, and we actually, I, I dug through to find the places where libffi might break things, and it seems that in those places that we did find, nobody cares. Um, so be aware of this. LibFFI with variadics is scary broken. It's not OMHF, it's LibFFI. So this graph hasn't come out as well as I hoped. Um, if we go have a look at the last quarter in the Debian archive, um, there are many, many lines here. The ones to look at, OMHF, is the red dotted line that is typically up around 96%. We had a little drop here when we had problems with buildies, and it came back again very quickly. Um, OMEL is basically keeping up at about the same point. This graph would be much easier to read because it would be much more spread out if it wasn't for the herd crap at the bottom here where they're not keeping up at all in any way. Sorry, I shouldn't be pejorative about herd. I just don't see the point. <laughs> the, the next version is basically more detailed. When I did these slides about 10 days ago, it was just showing for the last two weeks. And you can see OMHF, OMEL, despite the fact we have some of the slowest build machines uh, these days are keeping well up with everything else. Um, the blue line, in the, well, the turquoisey line in the middle there is IA64, which is keeping up in terms of hardware, but is struggling a bit more uh, for other reasons. So, talking about buildies, the big issue we have is we don't have our proper ARM servers. Nobody really makes ARM servers yet that we can actually just plug into a rack and leave to churn for, for years at a time. 
we end up using development boards instead. The ones we're using for ARMEL are mostly hosted at ARM, and those are the Marvell for Ocean uh, CPU, which is a V5. That's fine running the V4T stuff. They're reasonably spec'd. They have a gig and a half of memory, typically. They work very well. Obviously, we would always like faster. For MHF, we have the Freescale IMX53, which is a V7 board. That's a Cortex-A8, which means it's not the fastest build, build machine in the world. It's single core. It's got a gig of memory. But it does have native SATA, as does the Marvell board. Um, in terms of build D performance, um, far and away, the biggest issues are you want lots of CPU, you want lots of I.O., if, depending on the build, and you really, really want huge amounts of, C of RAM if you're going to be building some of the bigger packages. Um, if you're trying to build something like Ice Weasel or Open Office, uh, I think WebKit has shown this in the past as well, um, linking in swap hurts. Don't ever do it if you can avoid it. Unfortunately, on these machines, we don't have enough RAM, so we can't avoid it. So it's painful to see that the build itself might take two hours and then take 12 to do the final link stage. <sighs> Ow. It's not much we can do. For newer hardware, we're hoping for real servers. One of the nice things that's coming up in the ARM world is um, bigger vendors doing proper servers based on ARM. Um, the Calzada folks, um, are hopefully people might have heard of them, um, are people who are doing a very, very densely packed um, cluster-in-a-box style um, ARM server where you can have a little um, quad-core Cortex-A9, 4 gigs of RAM, many, many gigabit or 10 gig Ethernet connections to it on something that's not much bigger than, say, a, t a typical um, DIMM to go in a server box. And so for 5 watts, you end up with actually quite a capable machine. If you put loads of those into a 2U or 3U rack mount box, then that's it. That's your build farm in one go, and it's all neat and tidy and really nice. Um, I know there are, uh, that Dell are working on um, There's a recently announced uh, copper server, which is Dell's variation on, on that. We, well, that's using Marvell V7 uh, CPUs. Again, it's all about getting higher density and better throughput. So if you want to get many, many servers, you have a set of arm blades drawing almost no power but doing everything you need. Fingers crossed, I'm trying to get hold of, both, of, of examples of both of these to see how well it works, because I'm sick and tired of going and rebooting dev boards because, frankly, they're not designed for 24-7 stress. And proper servers would be lovely. Um, oh, if any people here have contacts you know, or friends in Dell, HP, um, Calzada, or anybody else who we know is doing um, ARM servers, um, please help. <laughs> so, quick summary of what's going on elsewhere in the ARM, ARM Linux world. Um, does everybody here know what a Raspberry Pi is? Right, does anybody want me to explain what a Raspberry Pi is? <laughs> okay, Hector's got one here to show if you want to have a look. It's a very, very cheap little single board computer um, which runs Linux. Um, not huge spec, but for the price, it's, it's very, very difficult to beat. Um, the big issue that we have to us in Debian and in all the other distros is that the CPU that uh, Broadcom used to go on the Raspberry Pi, or gave to go on the Raspberry Pi, doesn't do on V7. It is on V6. Um, if only they'd gone for V7, life would be so much easier, so much better, because we'd be able to use our best, highest performance uh, software on it. But the fact that it's V6 means we can't. So Raspbian is an, an attempt by, there's a, there's a couple of Debian guys actually doing an unofficial port using the V6 um, ABI and the hard float version, which is forwards compatible with what we're doing with ARMHF, so you can happily run any of their binaries on a V7 board, no problem. Um, it's awesome community work we're not going to make, it an, to, to make it an official Debian port. If I even suggested that we were, 
the FTP masters would probably come and murder me. Um, it's a crying shame. There's going to be lots of these machines out there, but it's just too targeted. It's too focused on one particular computer, which, to be honest, in maybe two years' time, will be replaced by V7 stuff anyway. It, it's not worth our time doing it. Um, having said that, of course, we're going to give help and advice to these guys as much as they need, uh, because they've done some very good work. Um, Ubuntu have an Army L port that used to be V7 soft float, uh, because that was what, what they were targeting for um, a number of, of reasons, and I don't pretend to know them all. Um, since we've now done RMHF in Debian and Ubuntu, frankly, keeping a V7 soft float is utterly pointless. So Ubuntu have quietly, until I started talking about it loudly today, started doing a soft float um, rebuild, sorry, um, a V5 rebuild of RMEL. Um, given time and uploads, eventually it will all fall back. Um, which then means, of course, Ubuntu then have software that works on the Pi just like we do. Um, ARM HF um, in Ubuntu was the first ARM long-term stable release, which just happened in April. Um, so there's been quite a lot of publicity about the fact that Ubuntu are now supporting ARM for the long term, which is really good. Oh, Sousa had never really got involved with ARM until quite recently. There'd been some very s small amounts of unofficial work. Um, but as we started talking about V7 hard float, I think it piqued some interest. And they've started alongside two. Um, they are working very much on V7, as, as, a, as though they're going to have it as a primary architecture soon. They also have a lower priority V5 port which, again, is for all of those um, old guru plugs, dream plugs, whatever, that still need v5. But there is not necessarily going to be any major official work for it. Um, if people are interested, they can help out, I'm told. What uh, Sousa are hoping for is an official 12.2 ARM release. Um, in fact, there's a, there's a guy from OpenSUSE who just started working in ARM, um, who, who, in fact, helped to helped tell me about all this. He wanted to give me several slides worth, but I wasn't that interested. <laughs> Finally, Fedora. Again, they're focusing on a V7 hard float port. They have just released Fedora 17. Again, they're doing a lower priority V5 port, which is best effort, and frankly, they're probably not going to keep around for very long. <laughs> going back to the, what I mentioned earlier about the linker path, this is where we have problems. Um, we had, we've had some major discussions uh, between the distro folks in the ARM community multiple times over the last couple of years. Uh, we thought we had agreement over what the description of V7 hard float was. Um, and then apparently other people thought otherwise. We had agreed, in theory, a standard triplet to describe V7 hard float uh, because it's important that we have a standard triplet if we're going to be sending patches upstream to, for various software packages. Again, people disagreed with that. Fine, we can live with it. They're just going to have to deal with their own patches. The biggest problem, as I mentioned earlier, was the linker path. Um, we had defined in an, agree in an agreed phone call between all of the distros and the upstream ARM people, upstream glibc people, upstream GCC folks, and we, we'd all got together on a conference call, arranged a fairly short notice to say, we must have a single standard linker path. And everyone said, yes. And then Fedora didn't actually implement what we agreed. <laughs> um, I'm still quite bitter about this. You may pick up on this. What I will say is, basically, Fedora 17 claims to have ARM please, for the love of God, don't use it. <laughs> if you do use it, I mean, to be honest, I'm talking to the wrong crowd anyway for people who are likely to use it, let's be honest. If you are tempted to use it, be very, very careful. Anything you build there will break as soon as you, as soon as you try and run it on any other distro. 
all of the other distros worked on this and got everything right, so, you can, so we have compatible binaries across all the distros. This is useful in the point where we're expecting to, we're, that we're going to get proprietary software. It's, we're going to want to all be able to run it. For, don't do Fedora. So even further, Magea have done some arm work. It's not quite clear exactly where they're up to at the moment. Um, there was some discussion. They weren't very keen on the V7 hard float. We're talking about V5, but we're doing some, some things that we didn't agree with. Um, Gen 2, of course, have, have done ARM stuff for ages, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, they've gone for a hard float uh, linker path like, like everybody else, but it actually, it doesn't really matter. You don't expect to be able to run pre-built binaries on Gen 2. If you are, why are you using Gen 2? The Chrome OS folks have literally in the last few weeks switched over to using hard float by default. Um, again, they were convinced by the fact everybody else has gone this way. It's silly not to. And finally, Android. Probably at the moment one of, maybe the most common single OS running on ARM. Um, again, the Android people are mostly doing hard float at this point. Um, whatever extra performance they can get out on anything they do, they'll take for free. So, new stuff. Um, the very, so, PowerPoint, Mike. Hang on, hang on. What about Red Hat Enterprise Linux? Um, Red Hat are going to end up doing, more than likely, doing an ARM release. Um, Part of the point of Fedora getting involved in ARM is Red Hat are interested. Um, I, am, I have spoken to multiple Red Hat people who are convinced that Red Hat will do an ARM release, maybe with the next, next release as well, maybe not. Um, Fedora are currently going through some very difficult discussions to work out whether or not ARM should be considered a primary architecture in Fedora. Until that has happened, I, can, I can't see Red Hat ever releasing on ARM. You know, it, if they're not going to be supported fully in Fedora, it's clearly not going to happen in Red Hat. So, um, the latest versions of hardware that is available real soon now, in fact, I think available to buy right now, at least in dev board form, is we have the Cortex A15 is the far and away the biggest, most powerful version of on V7. That is bringing with it some extra virtualization features. Um, again, this is considered useful for people wanting to do ARM servers. Um, even more importantly, possibly, well, probably, is it's also going to do LPAE. It is it's still fundamentally going to be a 32-bit architecture, but it will have support for um, the large physical address extensions, very similar um, to what Intel did um, ages back on i386. So you will be able to have an ARM box with 32 gigs of RAM in, but obviously you're still going to be limited in any single process to your normal 3 gig, 4 gig uh, memory. Um, the other thing that is being pushed for in the ARM world right now is standard boot ar architecture. At the moment we have I wouldn't even know what to hazard a guess exactly how many. There are dozens of different bootloaders for ARM. There are as many different boot configurations and setups as there are ARM vendors, and there are hundreds of those. Um, if we want ARM, if we, I mean, if ARM in general is going to succeed as an architecture for servers and more general purpose computers, um, U-Boot and all the others just aren't going to cut it. Um, UEFI and Device Tree and maybe even ACPI are all coming to the ARM world, which so you can actually get to the point where you will have a standard kernel that should boot everywhere and do the right thing. It's been a long time coming. We're not there yet. We will get there, I hope, I trust. So we even have even more new, bigger, faster, newer stuff coming. ARMv8 has been announced. Um, you might, you might have noticed on the schedule, I have another talk straight after this one. Guess what that is? <laughs> Please stay if you're interested. So, what else? We are always looking for more porters. Always. Um, the Debian ARM, port ARM team is actually 
probably the biggest ports team in Debian at this point. I'm not aware of any others that have more. We have lots of interested folks. Um, I, saw, I can see at least half a dozen folks here who, who are intimately involved. Um, we hang out in hash Debian arm. We're on the Debian arm list. Um, you can talk to us. We're friendly. We don't bite. So thanks, obviously, to ARM. You know, ARM is currently employing several Debian developers to do free software. This is really, really nice. It would be even nicer if ARM Legal were happy for us to share patches more readily. Um, Linaro um, is a nonprofit consortium of ARM and a number of its partners explicitly working on free, more free software, but that's the kernel, the GCC, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm working for ARM, but seconded into Linaro, which means I get to do a lot of free software stuff on work time, and that's really cool. And obviously, thanks to everyone who's worked on this stuff. It's, there's loads of people out there. Thank you, everyone. So, bloody hell. All right, I've been spouting at you guys for most of half an hour, which is really not what I planned. Talk at me. Tell me. What have I done wrong? What, what, what should we be doing next? Is there, anything else, is there anything people would like me to answer questions about? Is anyone alive? Ah. Can you say anything about uh, graphics acceleration? Yes, it's lovely when it works. <laughs> and free drivers. <laughs> In the ARM world, graphics acceleration is a touchy subject, as you well know. Um, although we're starting to see things improving very well, they're happening much more so in the x86 world, where there are a smallish number of vendors, and most of them are starting to open up. You know, um, AMD are giving specs out for what used to be ATI cards. They're working with things. Intel typically are giving out enough specs and are even employing um, free software people to work on their car, their drivers. NVIDIA aren't. Um, in fact, NVIDIA have a whole bunch of uh, good free software developers working for them, um, doing Linux kernel patches and stuff. But NVIDIA see their uh, their graphics hardware and their, you know as their, their crown jewels. Um, we may be waiting a long time for them to ever open up. In the ARM world, things are less good, um, and I wish I could. Exp I wish I knew a good reason why. Again, most of the players there see their um, special source as so special that they can't share it with anyone. Um, ARM it itself has the Mali um, graphics hardware, where. A number, of, a number of us inside ARM have been pestering to say, look, why can't we just open this up? It's not happened yet. Um, the, the, there's stuff from Qualcomm, there's stuff from Broadcom. Um, IMG, obviously, are one of, the, one of the most common with the PowerVR and the SGX stuff that's out there already. Um, we're working on it. There are people reverse en engineering these things, but you're going to need binary blobs essentially forever, and I wish it was, I wish it was otherwise. It's all patent incumbents, and they're all scared of each other. In fact, not so much scared of each other as scared of the trolls, who the moment that they see any source code for anything, will, will make, it'll make it that much easier for them to tie people up in court. Lawyers, I, I wish we didn't, ha didn't need them. Okay. Uh, I, I have here Hercules ECAF here, and this is ARM V7, and yeah. I want to know if the, you, did you try to, to port Debian on it? And, or if you know someone it's, it's playing with this, so I would li like to have contact. So wh which laptop exactly? Uh, eCafe, uh, Hercules eCafe. I honestly don't know. I've never heard. I've, uh, uh, is it an Afika? Sorry. I, 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 I. Is it Genesi? No, it's some of the strange box. It says cafe on the back. Cafe, okay. Um, Somebody type it into Google. Yeah, that's the best thing. Um, put details into Google. I mean, again, the problem is with lots of these things, there is such a long history of so many varied bits of ARM hardware out there that absolutely the core stuff on the machine will just work, but you need to be able to get to that core, to, to that core hardware. 
um, actually finding out how to put Linux on something and put Debian on it shouldn't be, should not be hard, but it's often harder than it should be. Put the, take the microphone back with you. So I have good luck because the, this device have a hardware switch, so it's dual boot uh, able. So you can you can choose it's booting from the from the uh, built-in uh, uh, flash or, or or from the SD card. Okay. So I already put Debian on it. But oh, awesome! It, yeah, cool. well, but not not really, not proper, so it's still no, Wi-Fi not working and some stuff. But I would like to get uh, contact with someone uh, playing with this, but I don't know. Okay, um, talk to me and some of the other ARM guys afterwards. Definitely come onto the RC channel and talk about it. I mean, whatever information we can find, yeah, it's great to get to get these things working. Okay. In fact, yeah, Hector seems interested. <laughs> <laughs> Just Con Constantinos on IRC. You see, the, the Hercules e Cafe has an IMX5. Okay. It should be similar to the Genesi one, to the Efica. Okay, which so is, it's is supported in Debian. So it should work. It's yeah. similar to the Efica. To the Efica. Okay, cool. Ah, and again in the middle. So we've had um, three official ports now, and yep. one unofficial ARMv, and you're planning another port now for ARMv8. Yes. And it seems to me that you're doing a lot of work, but I'm wondering if this will keep going forever, <laughs> replacing ports with newer and. I'm hoping ones. not. Um, we have good justifications for the ones we have already. I said we're already limiting. We're not going to. We're not going to take on the ARMv6 hard float. Um, it's common across all the distros now that they're doing the V5 port soft float, the V7 port hard float, basically so they cover the two dominant uh, groups of users. V5, we're still going to want, for all those people who are running the Freedom Boxes, the Shiva plug, the Guru plug, the Dream plug, you know, on all, a lot of the older, um, the other old machines, we, that we're, they're going to want support on V5 for a very long time. We can't, we're not going to do anything about that. The V7 hard float is very, very much what's needed if we want to get good performance out of current and uh, forthcoming ARM hard, hard, hardware in 32-bit. Um, the 64-bit ARM port that we're going, to, we're going to be wanting to do for uh, ARM V8, hopefully, will stay around for quite a long time, and we're not going to need, need a replacement for that. Touch wood. I don't know for definite, but we're not planning one. So yes, we're being greedy. We're going to want three ports in the archive. We'll, we'll support them well. It's fine. So the point <laughs> is that, that Arm spent 20 years being an embedded provider, where the idea was you sent some hardware and you built all your software for it, and they only just slowly getting out of that mindset into a world where it's like real computers, and the software comes from big archives out on the internet and needs yeah. to be compatible between different machines. So it's taken a long time to get to a world where they kind of realize they need to make stuff that expects to get standard software in standard formats with standard ABIs that aren't going to change every three years. Yeah. And I think we are now at that point. So yeah, it shouldn't change again every three years. Uh, <laughs> we, we should get at least a decade before we have to change it again, I hope. Yeah. Careful. Right, anything else? I guess not. Well, thank you all for coming. I said, if you're more in interested more in on V8, the, the new future 64-bit world, I'll see you again in about 20 minutes. Thank you. <laughs>